Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Didn't they already make this movie about the creepy black and white TV family? No, that was the Adams family. Didn't they already make this movie about a Frankenstein's monster getting a spouse? No, that was Franken the Bride of Frankenstein. Didn't the monsters have a werewolf son and a blonde niece? Hey, shut up. All this and more on Gory Storytime. Warning. Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Welcome to Gory Story Time. I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and his father, Craig. And this week, you know, might notice, for the two of you who watch, that we switched up the beginning. Because why have you go back and hear the answers to the questions? Why go and line those up when we could do the work for you? I mean, I love that he's suggesting he does any of the work for the show. I wrote any those who. questions, didn't I? Yeah. Guess who wrote them? Anyway. We're going to start our new series of four because, you know, we just got over with one. Um, Indeed. And for the Halloween season, I thought we'll do, we've done it before where we talked about movies that are more aimed at children or whatever, or younger adults. Definitely. Less scary, but to get into the mood of it. So I thought, why don't we do four family-oriented movies for Halloween. I'm not going to call them horror movies. I'm going to call them Halloween movies. This is a good Halloween movie, even though it doesn't take place on Halloween. Yeah, I get it. You, right? Yeah. So that's what this is. Um, and we're doing the new, because it just came out and we watched it almost immediately on Netflix. Um, it's the new Rob Zombie take on the Munsters. I will give you a little heads up. Going into it, he <clears throat> insisted he did not like the show. He's never seen it, but he doesn't like the show because I got him really into the Adams family. And he just assumed this was some sort of cheap knockoff. And I kept trying to explain it's a completely unrelated show. They were just kooky families that were out at uh, literally the same years. The L same like two or three years. Right. Exactly. Um, so, you know, he tried to have an open mind. We'll see how that worked. Um, Usually when he has an open mind, his brains fall out. But well, let's see. Um, but the basic premise is it's a prequel to the series. And Rob Zombie, you know, as a huge fan, pushed for, like, he fought to be the guy to bring it to the big screen. They've had some made-for-TV movies. This was, he wanted to bring it to the silver screen. Um, it was a passion project. And basically, it's the story of how Lily and Herman Munster meet, and the issues he has with his father-in-law, brother-in-law, you know, it shows him being, cre Herman being built and created, you mm. know. It's an interesting idea, leaving open the idea of sequels or whatever, I'm Indeed. sure. But that's about all I can think of to say about this story. Uh, plot until we get into our behind the scenes and our opinions on things. So without further ado, here's the teaser trailer because I thought yes. that was a better trailer to show you.
Now what? Well, all right. So now that you know none mm -hmm. of the spoilers of the movie, which is what I want in the trailer. But if any of you have ever seen the opening credits to the monsters, that is dead on. Like Sherry Moon, like her movements, Herman's movements, whatever. Like every one of the, like it was dead on. Except there's a couple of people missing, and we'll get into the. Well, that's because it's a prequel. They didn't have the, their. That, those people didn't exist when they hadn't been together first. I mean, their niece might have been, but. Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> That'll probably be in any sequel if it ends up happening, but we'll get into that later. <clears throat> but first, a lot of people seem to still not get the whole point of us doing this show. They think it's because we love horror. And don't get me wrong, we do, but that's not why we do the show. We're trying to sell ourselves. We're trying to sell ourselves for cash. We are basically prostitutes yeah, basically. to anyone who wants to cut us a check. Back up the Brinks truck, as I like to say. But how do we make that money? Well, we advertise real products that actually exist and they fill our bank accounts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's over here going, I don't even have a bank account. What are you talking about? Anyway, um, this week, Gory Story Time is brought to you by Zombie Snacks, the baked goods company who makes delicious treats based only on the works of Rob Zombie. Some of our treats include House of a Thousand Cookies, Monster Munch, Living Dread Rolls, and, of course, the classic Sherry Moon's Pie. Zombie snacks. So good, they're scary. Ah. And by the new reality show project, uh, show Project Passion, where wannabe filmmakers pitch why they should bring their favorite TV show or book to the big screen. Watch each week as one of our contestants has their stupid dreams crushed as America watches and laughs. The big winner gets to make their dream project in a million dollar payday. Project Passion coming soon. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I would watch the heck out of that show. <laughs> All right, now we're going to get into what we like to call the meat and beef of this show. Uh, because that show. way it's healthier. See, well, if, if, you're, if you're low carb, welcome to the meat and beef of the show. No potatoes here. Uh, where we just dive into some behind the scenes information as we learned it on IMDb and some other places, but mostly IMDb because I'm lazy and they have it nice categorized sections. They have a section that says <laughs> trivia. facts or yeah. trivi trivia. Yeah. Anyway, do you want to go first or do you want me to? Uh, you can. All right. Rob Zombie shot the film with a heightened color scheme. He, quoted, he was quoted as saying, I noticed when the actors were in their makeup and they were just walking around getting lunch or whatever, they looked like cartoon characters come to life. They were just so insanely colorful, I had to light the movie in the same fashion. It really seemed at all times like a live action cartoon, which was really exciting. I have to say, honestly, I took it as it looked kind of like the colorized version when they started colorizing some of the Older, older monster episodes, stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, where it looked just off but very brightly colored. But anyway, uh, this movie was really something Rob Zombie had wanted to do for a long time. He was a giant monsters fan as a child. The teaser trailer is a shot-by-shot -shot remake of the monsters title sequence, and you just saw that. And that's what that was, yes. Uh, Pat Priest, who played Marilyn Munster in the Monsters has a cameo role in this film. This marks the second time Pat, uh, that <clears throat> Ooh, Pat Priest has made a cameo in a new monster incarnation, the first being 27 years ago in Here Come the Monsters. Um, Daniel Roebuck is a longtime fan of the monsters and owns a Herman Munster doll that is signed by Fred Gwynn. He also met Al Lewis through a friend. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, this is Rob Zombie's first movie not to be rated R. And there was, I mean, there was a couple swears that were bleeped because he worked it out where it was on TV so it would be bleeped and it made sense. Yeah. Um, 
Rob Zombie and Sherry Moon Zombie are huge fan of the Munst, fans of the Munsters. Zombie recorded a commentary for the Blu-ray release of Munster Go Home from 1966. It was a movie. Um, and named one of his songs after Grandpa Munster's race car, Dragula. Hmm. Uh, when Herman Munster, Jeff Daniel Phillips, yells, Car 54, where are you? It is a callback to Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis's TV show of the same name, the original Herman and Grandpa. Mm-hmm. And that was before the Munsters. So they already knew they had, like, some... Oh, yeah. They got, to, they got along. The first ever Munsters movie to show... Or, sorry, or show not to feature the character of Eddie Munster. The son, right? Yeah. Yeah. But he wouldn't exist in this Not universe before yet. they had met. Right. Uh, the character Bella is a nod to Bella Lugosi, who also played a gypsy named Bella in The Wolfman. Mm-hmm. Daniel Roebuck starred alongside Fred Gwynn, the original Herman Munster, in Disorganized Crime. All right. He also played Jay Leno, I told you, and I showed you what he looked like as Jay Leno, and you were like, actually. Like- he kind of looks like Jay Leno, all right. Uh, the f- this film is a prequel to the TV series. We said that earlier, and mm-hmm. we're showing it again. Jorge Garcia from Lost and Daniel Roebuck starred in Lost. Oh, starred in Lost together. I guess I didn't need to say that because it was coming up. Yeah. Uh, on location filming officially wrapped on the 7th of July this year. Yeah, ni- 19, yeah 2022. And it came out September, what was the It came date? out Friday. Or not Friday. Whatever the Wednesday. date was. Right. But I'm saying, what was the date? 28th? 27th? I don't know, something, something like, like that. that. But anyway, came out on Netflix and we watched it immediately. Um, there are several references to Rob Zombie, the opening characters, the nightclub, and as they arrive at Mockingbird Lane, if you watch close, you will see some of their references. Um, Cassandra Peterson, better known as Elvira, played Barbara Carr, the realtor who sells them the house. And I, I have to say, I know she's come out as, you know, dating or being with a woman for many, many years. But that does not change anything about my feelings about how gorgeous that woman is. I don't care her age. Like, I've seen pictures of her recent, like, in the last few years with the Elvira getup on, and... Yeah, because Sandra Peterson doesn't crack either, all right? There is absolutely no chance that at that age I'm going to look anywhere near as good. I don't look that good now. (laughs) <laughs> and you're half her age. You know? Like, I grew up going, oh, she's hot. And that hasn't changed. <laughs> um, the French version of Woody Woodpecker cartoon that was shown was called Pantry Panic. That was the name of the oh. specific cartoon. Uh, other guests include Butch Patrick, the original Eddie Monster, and Dee Wallace, a.k.a. the mother in E.T. Mm-hmm. At the wedding, when his head catches fire, the tin can man says, call 911. In Transylvania, the number for emergency services is 112. So so that's a mistake. Yeah. Well, it Ooh. was maybe they didn't know that or maybe the joke, you know, if you said call 112, a lot of American audiences would be like, mm, what are you talking don't, about? Don't you mean 911? You know, so. Hey, robo man, get it right. Uh, in Paris... For their honeymoon, the newspaper held by Lily reads, Lundi 30 de Juliet, 1962. 1962. Uh, Monday, 30th of July, 1962. Yet while on a date before marrying Lily and Herman, saying, I Got You, Babe, by Sonny and Cher, which would not be released until July of 65. Ah, what they're not taking into account is this is, what's it called, a movie. And that doesn't matter as long as it's good. Well, no, it, it's still a mistake, you know, but it's not one that takes or away. Or they were holding an old newspaper. What matters? All right. Well, it doesn't matter. You're off. She was holding on to the newspaper for that scene, and it was three years old. Sure. Going to Paris on their honeymoon, she's like, got any, like, years old newspapers? There's something wrong with you. Yeah. Very, very wrong with you. Anyway. All right. Now. Well. We like to give the uh, scores from Rotten Tomatoes. But I also want to emphasize what those are again. 
okay? Rotten Tomatoes does not score a movie. They do not say, oh, out of 100, it is this, meaning they, they feel that way. What they're doing is they're taking all of the reviews that they accept as real reviews, which we're not, and not they, yet. if they're positive, they put it in the positive column. If it's negative, they put it in the negative column. And then the number they give is the percentage of positive reviews. I'm not going to give away what our will end up being, but they it's not what they say it's, it is for good or bad. It's the percentage of positive reviews. Yes. And usually for horror and for comedy... We've Which noticed, this kind of happens to be both. I mean, there's not a lot of horror to it, even though I it's mean, Rob Zombie. they're monsters. They're monsters, but that... Okay, so Twilight's a horror movie? That's uh, your main argument. So anyway... Sure. No. I mean, it really scared me that yeah. they kept making more of those. Yeah, that. this isn't that. Let's not go down that path. But uh, they also have a section on their website where the people can cast their positive or negative vote... Two. Yes. So, what do the critics say about this film? 40% of the critics said that this movie As was at today. least a 3 out of 5. It's changed a little since he first saw it. It's gone up a little, actually. It has. Um, and the people have it at 36. Um, we'll get into what we think about that shortly. Um, so, what was your favorite scene? In, no, let's start with least favorite. Least favorite scene. Yeah, what was your least favorite scene? Okay, now this is as someone approaching this movie as not a fan of the show. I haven't seen the show. Right. So, but you, but you decided because you're an Adams Family fan, you couldn't be. So going into this, and this is my only introduction so mm -hmm. far to the monsters. I did not like when Igor is that what his name is? Igor. Igor was turned into the bat and started flying around. I thought it looked hokey and dumb you immediately said, oh, that looks exactly like it did in the show. That doesn't help, because in the, in the 60s, that'd be okay. But it is 2022, ah. and they could make him look like a bat flying around. Instead, sure. I have they made him look like a I have one bat toy he was on a string. He was going for having it look like the show, okay. ergo. Um, well, and here's the thing. That's problematic I, for me. Like, I thought it was weird that the guy's name was Igor, Igor. but I knew that... Igor, the, like, there was episodes where Grandpa was trying to... Turn him back into a person. Yeah, so, like, he did a good job with having that. It's just, I forgot that part, and I was like, Igor's his bat. And then when he turned him, I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, I, Igor's his bat that was a person. Well, and to be fair, to be fair, when I realized that, I was like, oh, yeah. And I said, like, I was wrong for that thought earlier. Yes. Because we talk while the movie's going, like... We give our opinions. We're like, oh, this is cool. This sucks. Whatever. Yeah. My least favorite part. Boy. Um, I'm going to have to say some of the name changes, I guess. Okay. Because looking up Grandpa Munster's name, for example. Yes. Most people call him Grandpa Munster. He's obviously not. He's Lily's dad. Um I remember episodes where his last name was Dracula, but when we looked it up, it said it wasn't. And I believe in this movie it wasn't, which I thought was odd because I know Rob was, was his love for fan. the show. So I don't know if that was maybe a studio note. I don't know if that was a change for a reason. Like maybe there was some sort of legal thing. But I don't we, know. When I looked it up again, it finally came up and was like, oh, oh you mean Sam Dracula? <laughs> right. And I, th I, I said, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Was Sam Dracula? So th there was a couple little changes like that, but eh. the, I'm actually nitpicking because I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I know I'm going to get blasted if, if people watch this online because there's so much hate for no good reason, my opinion. Yeah, I don't see it so far. But what was your favorite scene? Okay. This is a lot easier. This is way easier. I'm probably going to go with just because it showed at least who this Herman is. When Lily finally gets to his door to ask him to dinner, and he's just being... He's trying to be suave. So but ridiculous. Then, well, he's trying to be suave over the top, and then he like hides behind the door. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, which is absolutely a thing from the I show. I mean... Like... That... You could... I... 
I was going to say mean, that my is favorite the thing. The thought process of every like dude. I mean, Rob Zombie loved the material. You can tell. Yes. This is a love letter to the monsters. It is. And there's other movies we've talked about personally yes. that were that for people. Like, this was definitely a love letter to Passion the Monsters. Passion Project. And I hope that a... they greenlight a sequel. I don't care. What I, the, I do too. I don't care what IMDb, or not IMDb, uh, Rotten Tomatoes has figured out that the critics think of it because I enjoyed this. Like I hope he makes buckets of money. store I went to today was giving away posters with that and I took one because yes. I wanted it. Yes. Um, which kind of gives away what we're going to say about our rating later. Um, at least a little bit. Uh, my favorite thing, honestly, honestly, how much these actors and actress uh, played the parts the way they did. Because... Daniel Roebuck kind of tried, it sounded like he was doing a little bit of the grandpa voice, but I don't think, you know. Uh, uh, Jeff Daniels? No, not, not Jeff Daniels. Daniels. <laughs> Jeff Daniels something. Dang it. What have I done? Jeff Daniel Phillips. That's the one, not Jeff Daniels. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> he, he didn't like do the Fred Gwynn voice. He but he tried to capture the Hermanisms, the oh boy, oh boy. But it sounded different because it was in his voice. And it didn't bother me because he wasn't trying to mimic. He, and Grandpa he did he sound a little more like the it. thing, so he did his own. But I, and I would worked. say my absolute favorite thing is, as I, and I'm going to get hate for this too, anyone that watches this, because so many people want to trash Sherry Moon Zombie. They just want to trash her. Why has he got to put her in the movies? Well, because he directs movies. It's his wife. He loves her. And he wants to... I mean, why was... He, what's her name in the Donald World Series? He doesn't want to leave and go make... A, he, right. He doesn't want to go and make a movie and be away from his wife, whom he loves, when he can bring her along, I mean, pay talk her about to be in the movie. always on vacation. I mean... And do what you love. I mean, like he definitely does what he loves. This was absolutely doing what he loves. But I would say, honestly... I've never been like one of those Sherry Moon is a horrible actress people. I'm not. No. Like, I liked her in Halloween. A lot of people give her crap for that. I almost swore, and I know I'm not supposed <gasps> to. Um, On an M-rated show? How dare. Well, it wasn't M-rated if I don't swear. And this was a PG movie, so it'd be weird to start cussing a bunch. I mean, they said that word in this movie. Anyway, the point is, the point is, I really think she did a good job. I don't think she tried to sound like Yvonne DiCarlo. I think she got a lot of the voice patterns down, and that's what I was telling you. She tried to speak kind of like in her way. Cadences. Yeah. Yeah. And I think she did a really good job. I like I don't I know a lot of people like anyone that watches this video is gonna be that hates her is gonna attack. I don't care. She did a great job. And if you ever see this Sherry Moon zombie, you did a great job. And you did a they really did, great job. I'm very impressed. And don't listen to the haters because your husband puts you in movies for a reason. And it's not just because you're married. It certainly helps. But I mean, like, yeah, it would be weird if he kept picking other women. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? But anyway, and I'm saying this having, like, I've met people that were in, like, Three from Hell and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Like, you know? Um well, so have you. Yeah. But what we... We haven't met her. We haven't met Rob. I'd love to. Uh, absolutely. He seems like a really cool dude. Like, can you imagine going trick-or-treating at Rob Zombie's house? Dude. He's got king-size candy bars, I, I promise. I assume. I assume. <laughs> but anyway. But, I mean, he He's lives got Halloween. He, he out, lives like... Halloween. Um, but, yeah. So, I would say that's my favorite part is I think anyone that really pays attention to her acting in this, it should... I honestly believe it should shut up the haters. Obviously, with these numbers, other people it's don't not, agree. Right. But that is certainly not the opinion I have. No. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, what would you rate this film? Knowing that, especially knowing you I went mean, into it thinking you didn't like the characters, because, like, be, without having seen it, just based on based being a fan solely of something on unrelated. This, I think I'm giving it a nine. I mean, I'm probably going eight and a half. Which is funny, but that's because I was sitting there going, mm, that's a little different from the show, but 
you know. But me, everything was brand new. Right. And I am going to get him to watch the show because now that he saw this, he's like, oh, is Herman that kind of a cornball? I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Anyway. Looking forward. Now, let's do our normal end of program things and announce the things we do. Yes. So we, uh, this show is aired on Fact TV, channel 1076 on on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. You can check us out on Facebook. And when I say us, I mean not only Gory Storytime, but also... Hit up Fact TV's page because they live stream things. They're live streaming this currently. Um, you know, it, they, there's a lot of local content that gets made by people, and yeah. it's it's not the average community TV where there's like one or two shows, and then it's a bunch of like billboards and, right. and meetings. Now they do have a lot of the meetings, but they also have people who come in here like we do, and we've done this since you were what 13. Yeah. And, you know, actually come up with, like, concepts. The people that work here have made movies and TV shows. It's kind of an awesome little community thing. But anyway. Yes. Um, you could also go to factaid.com and watch a bunch of the back episodes of this, including also other shows that they have up on that website. They have you many can, You can pieces follow of us on the Twitter. I'm at Craig Jakes. It's just my name. All one word, all lowercase. I'm at Jiggly Firm Brain. I only tweet things that I find funny that he says. In or out of context. Whatever makes it funnier. Yes. All right. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, and you know, if go you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like I would love this to actually like start getting bigger. Yeah. Um I'm a huge fan of horror and you know we've done this a lot and we're going to end up putting up all of the episodes but if you look up fact TV or look up gory story time you can also find fact tv's page and you can like and subscribe to that too because just like their website it's got so much content and just one last time uh like if this is a movie you want to see we said we watched it on netflix it was released there the same day as release in theaters and dvd i guess was... go see it yeah like this is and I if you like the monsters, I think this is a good Rob Zombie, movie. since the world is so small and people end up finding celebrities on the internet and talking to them, if you end up seeing this, ignore all the nonsense hate. Good job on this movie. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, that's about Until it. Until next so. time, I'm your host Jason. I'm his co host and father Craig and, and sweet, sweet dreams. dreams.